Good morning. As we go to the Tachitas of today, we start off with the Chumash, the portion of the week we're holding in the Pashas Shlach, we're holding on chapter 14, verse number 26, in the portion of Shlach. And God spoke to Mesha and Adin, saying, How much longer will this evil congregation which they are complaining against me. It's the complaints of the Jewish people. Which they complain upon me. Shamaiti, I have heard. Now she says, Who's this evil congregation? And from here we learn that a congregation needs to have ten. Because there was 10 guys in the Torah calls it an Ada, a congregation. Asheim amalinim, as Yisrael alai, the Jewish people. As Sludas ben Yisrael, Asheim the complaint to the Jewish people that they complained, the spies caused them to complain. Not only they complained, but the Jewish people complained with them. Verse 28, to Emma Aleihem, therefore tell them, Chayani nom Hashem. As I live, says the Lord. If it's not that what you have spoken to my ears, that's what I'm going to exactly do. Now she says, when it says that kind of expression, my life is upon me, the notes, the, it's termed denoting an oath. It's a concept of a shvua. If not, so will it be. If I do not do as you have spoken into my ears, it is if, as if I do not live, God forbid, as it were. So therefore, it's a concept of a vow. Kashe di What does that mean? Which you have spoken, requested of me, or if, if only you have died in the desert, that you want to die in the desert, that's your wishes. So you'll get your wishes by mid in this desert. Your corpse will die, of course, will fall. Your entire number for the age of 20 and up, but that's the son of Amaila, the 600,000 Jews, Asher which you complained against me. Now she says, all those that counted in any of the senses, the senses which they made in the desert, which uh, number, for example, going to returning from the war, contrib contributing the shekel, those are listed. Those tallies will die. They are all those at the age of 20 and up, excluding the tribe of Levi, who were not counted from the age of 20, but were counted the age of a month and above. Verse 30, Amatim Tavel will you you shall not come into the land. which I lifted up my hand, I raised my hand, Lashakin Eschem Sham to bring you there. Kim Kala bin Yefuna, besides Kala, the son of Yefuna, Baishaya bin Nun. And all your children that you said, you made a statement, they're going to be for spoils. They see Isam, I'll bring them into the land. They will know the land. Which you despised. And all your bodies, all your bodies, your corpse will die in this desert. Now she says, I translate this verse according to the to the Targum, and your corpse, atem, your corpse of yours. Since the previous verse he spoke about the bringing of the children to the land, now he wants to say, but as for you, 600,000 men, you'll die in the desert. And your children will wander in the desert for 40 years. They'll bear your defection. Attain Pigrecha and Midba until all your corpses will fall in the desert. Now she says, now one of them died, and Gemara says, now one of them died before the age of 60. This is why 40 years it was decreed, so that those who were 20 years old would reach the age of 60. The first year was included, although it proceeds in spashing the spite. But by the time they made the golden calf, this decree of the God who had in mind, this is where he started right away, 50 days after going on the time. This was, this was a cumulative sin, so to say. 
started over the golden calf. And ultimately, so to stay, the straw that broke the situation was the spies. The first was included in the yeah, but he waited until the measure of wickedness was filled. This is what it says, but on the day I make accounting, at the time of the spies, I shall reckon the sin. Here too it says, you'll bear your iniquities. The plural indicating there were two iniquities, mainly the one of the calf and the one of the complaint, the, the, the spies. In calculating their ages. So the Taylor says 20 years old from the time of the first time they were counted when they came to the mountain after the after the golden calf. That was the first time they were counted. Should you consider this part of a year, like a whole year, and they entered the 60th years, though it was about 20 years old, died. And she says, they will endure your guilt. Verse 34, in the day, counting the number of days which you toured the land. For 40 days it took you. A day for a year. You'll carry the sin. Aboyim Shana for 40 years. We indict them as to Nasi, you'll know my alienation. Now she said, What does that mean to Nasi, my alienation, that you alienated your heart from following me? The word to Una denotes a removal, as in his father obstructed his Nia, her. Later on, you have this expression of when somebody stops somebody to alienate him, to separate him. Verse 35, Ani Hashem Dibayti. I, the Lord, have spoken, if I'm not going to do this, this entire congregation, which assembled against me, in this desert, they'll come to an end, and there they will die. Verse 36, in these ten men, which Moshe Rabbeinu sent, sent to check out the land. By Yeshua, Yelin, all of them, they came back and spoke this evil. It's called Eida, to the entire congregation, to bring a slanderous report in the land. Hash says when they returned from scouting the land, they caused the entire congregation to complain against him by spreading, by spreading slanderous. Those men died. Expression Eitzia Diba implies instruction to speak for they ply the tongue of man to speak about something as it as in making the lips of the sleeping doivev to speak it may, it may be either good or bad and that's why it says in verse number seven, seven, 37 who spread evil reports of the land because the word diba diba can be that's why it says the Diba, uh, Diba could be could be good or bad. Diba is the moon, like a Navi, same word, and moving of the lips. Diba, no French is talk, is gossip. Verse 37, and the men of the and the men who spread evil deports these ten guys. Magefa, they died in a plague. Yeah, Hashem before God. And she says, the Gemara says. The death which was fitting for them, measure for measure, measure their sin with their tongue. And now retribution, their tongue extended to their navels. Worms came out from their tongues and they entered their navels. This is why the scripture says in the plague rather than in a plague. And this is also the meaning before the Lord that, that the plague was fitting for them according to the methods of the other one. Blessed be the enemy that he meted out, the Abishti means out, mida keneged mida. Measure for measure. Verse 38, Yeshua ben Nun v'kala b'yifuna. Yeshua ben Nun, in call of the son of Yifuna, Choyum and Anoshim, they survived from these 12 guys. From these guys, Ha'ilchum Masoret went to Telekatatan, check out the land. In fact, that Ashi Ash has a question, why the scripture means to tell us? Why does it tell us? We know that already. That they remained alive from the men. Teaches that they took the spies portion of the land, and not only remained alive, but they received their portion of the land. Verse thirty-nine: Vayda told the Jewish people whatever is going to happen. 
and the people mourned greatly. They got up, some of them got up in the morning, they went up to the mountain. They said, he knew, we made a mistake, we're ready to go up, we're going to to slow. Which God spoke, because we have sinned. Ah, she says, what do you mean? This is the root leading to Ed Slo. He no lino la mokim, we're going to Ed Slo. Hashem Hashem, which God said to give it to us. Ki chatanu. We sinned. What was our sin? That's better to go to Egypt. You're going against God's word. He lay sitzlach, and it's not going to succeed. What you're doing is not going to succeed. Altalu, don't go up. Because God is not in your midst, you should not be beaten in front of your enemies. The Amalekim and the Kanani they are before you, but on Falton Bechad of your fall by the sword. For the, for you have turned away from the from God. God is not with you. Now she says that is to say this will happen because you turned away from God. But they didn't listen so far the sword. They defiantly ascended to the top of the mountain. But the covenant of God did not leave the camp. Ashes by Apilu notes a concept of insolence, similar to behold the insolence of Pela. So they uh, similarly Eifel. The word Eifel means uh, you know what the basic defiantly. To do something defiantly. Verse 45, the Amalekites and the Kanites who lived on the mountain came out. And they, they killed them, crushed them, and they chased him at Kherma. Now she says, crushed, grinding of plow at Kherma. That's the name of the place, which means destruction, commemorating the event that took place there. Chapter 15, verse number one. God spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the Jewish people and, and tell them, When you come to your dwelling place, which I am going to give to you. Now she says over here, he informed them, don't worry, you're going to get into the land. Even though you're going to sit here 40 years, but ultimately you're going to come to Eretz Yisrael. You're going to make an offering to God. Whether it's a burnt offering, a zevach, sacrifice, for either making a vow in a dove or for a contingent nation, or in your holidays. To bring a, a, a pleasing smell to God. Whether it's from the cattle, or whether it's from the sheep. Now she says, you make a fire. This is not a command. It means when the, you arrive in the land and decide to make a fire offering, if you want to. So your free choice, or you make a fire offering for an obligation, obligatory festival for sacrifice, which I require you to make on the festival. This is a, this is, um, it's a pleasing to me that as Rashi said in Parshvayika, it's something pleasing to me that I've asked and you've done. Verse number four, and one who ever brings an offering to God, the ocean should bring a mincha, a uh, meal offering, sailors of flour, a sodding, it should be one tenth of flour, and it should always be mixed with a quarter of hin of oil. So now she said, when you we hear the Taylor's telling us when you show offer up a libation and a meal offering for each animal, you bring a carbon, a carbon has to come with a meal offering, a mincha, and it has to come with nasachim, with libations, with wine. The meal offering is completely consumed, and the oil is blended in it. The wine is, is put into the basin from which it runs in the altar down the foundation in the in the, in, in, in the base amigdash on, on the mezbeach. There was in the corners of the Mizbeach, there was like this basin. This basin had a, a, like, a like a bowl, and it was a hole in it, that it was in the bottom of the bowl. It was connected to the Mizbeach, and it went through a hole 
into the Yisoyed HaMezbech, it went into the foundation. So when they poured the wine into that basin, it went into the foundation of the, of the, of the altar. This is all brought to the Gemara, Sarta Saita. And a quarter of a hint of wine for Nesachim, which is called libation, Nesach. You shall prepare with a burnt offering. This is the, the word Nesach, Yayin Nesach, that comes from Yayin Nesach. Wine, you have to be careful with wine because you, we're worried that the wine, just like the nations of the world took. The concept of pouring wine, like they from the base of Mikdash, because the base of Mikdash, this was a part of the service in the temple that they poured wine. Yayin Nesach, wine that was poured on the Mizbeach. So they took it, the nations of the world took it also that they used to pour wine, they used to drink wine, and it's still today, concept of wine in their service. So that's why we're worried about non kosher wine, that it's Yayin Nesach, not the notion of non kosher wine, it's Yayin Nesach, that uh, wine is wine, it comes from grapes. But it can be yayin nesach, yayin wine that comes from them. But not a Jewish uh, source could be used for libations in, in, the, in, 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 in the service of idolatry, which is called yayin nesach. It comes from this word, the yayin nesach, the libation. This relates to everything mentioned above in the meal offering, the oil and the wine. Verse number six, oil ayel, or for ram. You shall make a meal offering containing two tenths of fine flour, the lulub shemen, which is mixed with oil, the visahin, at least a third of a hin of oil. Now she says, or for ram, I mean, as you said before, for, for uh, either for sheep or for goat, or for ram. Verse number seven, the yain lenesach again, the third of a hin of wine, lenesach, for this libation, he poured the mezbeach, shlishis a hin, needs to be at least a um, a third of a hin, hin is a, a, a mount, dakil vladech nechayv l'ashem, shall be brought up as a pleasing offering, which is a fragrance, so to say, rech nechayach, a pleasing fragrance to God. That completes the chumash for today. At least the Pasha ends off with a positive, so to say, positive ending, the concept of bringing Karbonus Bezat Hashem in the base of Migdash in Yerushalayim. So now the Alter Rebbe continues, he goes, and we're holding in chapter 7, and this 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 part of the Tanya is called Shara Yechud, the portal of oneness, unit, um, oneness, so we're talking about the concept of the yichud, the aspect of unity, echad, oneness. So chassidus, we learn that there's a concept of yichudi le'ilah and yichudi tata. In unity itself, there's the higher level of unity and there's the yichudi tata, there's a lower level of unity. Is the concept of unity the way, so to say, in, in, the, in the way the Abishta looks at unity, so to say, God looking at unity through the eyes of, 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 of godliness. And then there's a concept of unity looking through the concept of the lens of man, which self understood there are two, two concepts in this unity. And one, one needs, to, needs to reach the other. So, first, in essence, as a, you, you need to go through your chuditata, you need to have a lower level of unity. To ultimately reach a higher level of unity, to ultimately reach a deeper level. So the Alter Rebbe is going to explain this concept. Say you with this will understand what's brought down in the Zaya. That in the Pasik Shema Yisrael, the Jew says Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad. Here, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. That's the concept. Of the higher level of unity. But if to that you say the verse, blessed be his be the glory of his kingship forever. Yehuditata is the lower level of unity. So that's the statement in the Zaya. So the connection between 
uh, the last statement, the last mentioned verse of the divine unity is now explained. Blessed be the name of his glory, of his kingship, forever. Vod. What means Vod? Vod. So it says, it explains for Vod, who echod bechlufiyes, the Vod, the word Vod, Vav, I, and Dalit has three letters, and Echod has three letters. So the first Yichudi uh, the first pasuk it says Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Second verse it says Baruch Shem Kvei Mochusay Leilam Vod. So the Aleph of Echad interchanged with the Vav of Vod, since both letters belong to the same group of letters, meaning Aleph, Hey, Vav, and Yud. So the notes are known as Oitis Hamsha. A connective letters, Aleph, Vav, Hey, and Yud are all there to connect something. Vod, the Vav, like like Ani Veata Vav, is the connecting letters. They all have something in similar. That the connecting letters, the Ches of Echad, interchanges with the Ayin of Vod since they share the same root in the organs of speech, and thus both belong to the, the category of guttural letters, Aleph, He, Chet, and Ayin. Finally, the large Dalet of Echad tr transposes with the small Dalet of Va'ed. So this is called in Kabbalah, Chalufa Yaisis, that we have the concept Thus, we have gmatria, numerical value of a letter, of letters, of words. We have interchangeable letters of words. That words that are in the same category or come out of the same, same, same uh, guttural, they use, they use the same guttural part of the mouth, are interchangeable. We can flip one to the other. We can use one with the other. And these, there's many different, that's why Alta Rebbe explained the, last week that you, how you have the creation of all everything in the world through many different, uh, through the actual word, as you find in the Torah, like uh, the word shur creates an ox, but then you have millions of animals and they all, some of them are created through the interchangeable letters, the gematrias, etc., etc. So not everything is written, as Alta Rebbe said there in Tanya, that not everything is written in the Torah as an as a creation of an animal with exactly the name in the Torah. Some things were created through different interchangeable ways of God's letters, because everything was created through the uh, through the Hebrew alphabet. And meaning doesn't mean that it had that everything created exactly through the through exactly these words, but actually through interchangeable words, through grammatical, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The cause and the reason of, for this symptom and concealment, with which the Holy One blessed be obscures. And he hid the life force of the world. So, Vaed is really Echod. That's all that the Zoya is telling us. Vaed is Echod. Why doesn't it say Echod? Why does it say Vaed? Because in the second verse is the way the Abish that comes into the world is Miachet, the world through Baruch Shem through the attributes of God. And therefore, over there it's hidden. It's in the word void, but really when you look at the word void, you need to interchange it. When you need a, when you look at the word void, it means actually echad. So thus, like the word, the, the, the verse, first verse, it says it openly. Because over there, there's nothing hidden, and Echad is one. And over there, you see the oneness. Abish that comes into the world, you look at the word, the void, and you have, to, you have to think about the word. You have to look at the word and see what it's interchangeable with. And why do you interchange the word void? You interchange it with the word Echad. So that's the concept of Tzimtzum. That's the aspect. Not that it's not there. It's 100% there. But it needs to be, you need to go to another step. 
you need to, it doesn't, doesn't seem, it doesn't look, you cannot see it openly, you need to, you need to know the interchangeable letters. If, if you didn't, we didn't learn today how echad and void are interchangeable, you would never know. So now you know. You look at the letter, and now you can start looking at the Hebrew letters in general because we just learned something. So we, if you know, if you know the sequence behind the letters and how they're interchangeable, and then you know how, and then you have to know how to interchange the letters. But in essence, that's the concept over here. But when you say the bar of shank, really you're saying echad. Blessed is the God's name is echad. It's all one. So that's like the Yehudi Allah is one of God. It's also Yehudi Tata. Also the lower level of unity is also God. It's all the same thing. It's all Echad. It's all one. But it's it's now it's interchangeable. You have to go to the next. You have to have an extra step, so to say. That's at the Vod, Baruch Sheikh, Kavayid Machuse, the way Abish comes to his name, which we learned yesterday, is the name, is the is the is the is the attributes of God. Especially through Malchus, but Lailam Vad, it comes to this world, it's Vad, it's all one. It's all one, but the word is not Echad, it's Vad. Meaning that the Altar Rebbe is asking why is indeed necessary for the world to appear as an independent existing entity? What, should it, what would be lacking if the world perceive its true state as an entity wholly nullified to relation to the source? The reason is as follows. Known, it's known to all. The purpose of the creation of the world. It's all for one thing. That the Abish is the king of the world. The Abish is the king of the world. That's it. That's our brachas that we say every day. All the brachas. That the Abish is the king of the world. The king of the world, Kabbalah's oil, Malchus Shemaim, accepted upon yourself the kingship of God. Why? The Mordor says, There's no king without a nation. A king is not a king over, as you'll soon see, a king is not a king over his family. He's a king over a nation. Pirush Am, what means a nation? Meloshim Imamis. In related etymology to the word oimus demin demin dimmed or extinguished comes from the word expression gacholim oimemes. When you have when you have a gacholim, you have a you have a gacholim is a, is a coals gacholim oimemes. You have coals that 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 are, are burning, and you have coals that are starting to die, starting to get dim. They're starting to diminish, right? Because they're losing their flame, they're losing their fire. So it co- am comes in a way, it comes from this concept that you have a concept of oimimus. It's, it's, it's getting, it's starting to diminish its value, diminish its power. It's, it's describing coals as which the fire has not been seen. It's starting to die. In terms of the relation of a king to his subject, the word am. Thus signifies those who in relationship with the king is not readily apparent. A melech beloy am means that a true king is a king that's to a, to, to a, a nation that's far from him. That it, you really cannot see the connection between the king and this nation. Shein devarim nefradim vizarim, which means they, the subjects, who comprise a nation are separate entities, distinct and distant from the level of the king. Only upon them does the king reign as a result of them nullifying themselves. That's the greatness of a king. A melech below am. means that the Abishta is not, a melech, a king, it was the Abishta, is not a king unless he has those that are far from him realize his greatness. Those that are close to him self-understood they understand his greatness. But the concept is that a king reigns upon a, upon a nation that doesn't realize his greatness. Because if you have a king who has hundreds of children, let's say, thousands of children, thousands of kids, 
You can't say he has kingship over them because there is kids. And so much of the king's children are part of himself. So it's not a king over his family. And even if this king has his pastor to reign over nobles alone, they are part of your kingdom. They're part of your kingship. So they, unlike king's children, are part of him. Nevertheless, since their position puts them in constant close contact with him, thereby lending some of the aspect of his kingship, the king cannot reign over nobles alone. Now you understand why Midas had Nitzachin by a king is important. The concept of victory by a king to take over lands, that was the nature of kings. The nature of kings was to make their kingdom bigger. To make it bigger. To conquer land. To conquer other people's lands. Why? Because that was the nature. That was in their, in their DNA. Because a king wants to have more dominion over people that are not part of his, his country. He wants to take other people and make them part of his country. And make them part of your, their, his country. That's the that's a melabalayam. Because as he creates a, a, a nation, uh, a country, he realizes, okay, now they they have been part of the country. He needs more. He needs more. Midas and Tzachin. The concept of the of, of, of the Tzachin to be victorious. And that's why ultimately Asha Sameh Bakalkai. That's why it's important this concept in in, in in the Torah that a real person who's happy. Who is happy with what his lot and not wanting more, but it's almost <laughs> very difficult, even for the concept of a human being, a regular person, to be happy with what he has. He wants to have more. He wants more things under his under his belt. He wants more possessions under his belt, under his dominion. That's the human nature of humanity, of the way the Abish created the world. Where does it come from? In a way, the Abish wants his kingship over, over the whole entire world. The Abish doesn't want to be just a, a melech on, 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 on one nation or two nations or three. The Abish wants to be the king of the world. The Abish to fill the whole world. He wants to be Hashem Echad Vayebeyemahu. The Abish will be a king of the world. He sings always Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach. Hashem Yim Leich Leilam Vad. Hamishta wants to be king of the world. That's Midasi Shal Malchus. That's the concept of Malchus. Meishel Bekeeper. Concept of king who, who, who dominates A to Z. And, and everything that's, that's in the world. But therefore, therefore, that's why it said, but Reivam Hadras Melech. That's why the expression in the Gemara, with a majority of numerous of nations is the glory of the king. So the more people that are there, the more people that come to give is the beauty of the king because that's the concept of Malchus. That's the aspect of kingship. Really, we have to comprehend it's so important, especially for many people today in our generation and that there's no kings. To comprehend the kind, because we base, if you understand, Malchus, I mean, Chassidus alone talks about Malchus, the aspect of kingship. And again, our whole davening is Melech. The aspect of kingship in a positive way, not a negative way, because that's what we've been brought up. They, they hate kings. But really, we need to comprehend the concept of kingship in a positive way. Because they, because it's important to us the concept. Baruch Atah, as I said, you keep on saying a bracha. You say Baruch Atah Hashem Alekeinu Melech Ha'olam. The concept of kingship, because it's the concept of the glory of the Abish. We're not looking for kingship of humanity, which also the truth is, as Jews we are, we're hoping for Mashiach to come and there'll be again the concept of uh, of, of of kingship. David Melech Yisrael, David. Well, Malchus Davil will turn to the Jewish nation. Only upon strangers can sovereignty apply. Strangers to the king himself. The same is true above. The ultimate intent of revelation is divine kingship found expression when it reigns over the lowly created beings. The Abishta in essence is waiting for us. 
He's not waiting for tzaddikim. They might be compared to his ministers that are close to him to begin with. Abish to God is waiting to be a melech over me. That's what we need to ask a question. Not that the Abish is the king of the world. The Abish is the king of the world. He has many, many servants. He has billions of angels. He has Baruch Hashem, many tzaddikim who, uh, who, who, who make him a king over them. But God is waiting for me. God wants to know if I'm his king. If he's my king, I'm sorry. If he's my king, if I am ready to crown the Abish to God as king over me. Because I am far from God. I realize that. Me and God have a fast distance from one another. Because I'm so finite in all levels of finitude. I'm so finite and so coarse. And nevertheless, the Abish wants to be my king. And therefore, he reigns over lowly created beings who perceive themselves as existing independent of him, as that they too should be humble and nullified to say to themselves. But when we say Shema, when we say Shema, and therefore, Gemara says, Torah says, that the, these two verses is Kabbalah Sel, Malchus Shemaim. You understand the first verse of Shema, the first chapter from Shema, till the end of the first, Ve'ahavta, is all one concept. He's accepting himself the yoke of heaven. One accepts upon himself, humbles himself, which that means to accept upon myself. I humble myself to want to be united with Malchus Shemaim, the kingship of heaven. And, and now we learn the two levels of Kabbalah Sel. Kabbalah Sel through Yehudi Ilah, through the ultimate level of oneness, or Kabbalah Sel through Yehudi Tata, through the lower level through the concept of Timson, to the concept of something that is hidden. I have to go through the, through the darkness to reach this, this union. V'shem, I made al of Malchus is barir. And the name that indicates the attribute of God's Malchus, kingship, who shame Adnus. This is the shame Adnus, Adenai. Adenai means Lord. That's the English translation. Lord. So that's why it's important. Some sedurim you use, you'll see it says the word Hashem. If you say it in English, Hashem means the name. You need to say, Lord. If you say it in English, if you say it in Hebrew, you say Adonai. Which means the same thing, Lord. For his kingship lies in the fact that he is the Lord. Of the whole universe. He's the Lord. He's the, he is the Lord. Meaning he is the boss. He is the king. He is the Lord. And, and, and that's what Adnus means. That's what the first one who first called God by the shame Adon is Avram Avinu. He's the master. The ruler. Adnus is rulership. That's the same thing as kingship. Rulership. So it comes out this attribute of Adnus, Malchus. And this name, the name of Adnus, signifies lordship, which brings the world into existence. The word Malchus. That the Abishta is the king, he's the lord, the master. He gives the whole world existence. And sustains it. It sustains it that it should be as it is now. So we have to, in essence, realize Melech. That's our avoid. Our avoid is to realize the Abish is the Melech. Not nature is the Melech. Don't be fooled by the word nature to understand that that is the king of the world. No. The real king of the world is the Abishtah, is God that comes through nature, comes through Malchus, comes through Dibur, comes through the word Ad Adonai, which we don't say Yutke Vavke, right? We don't say the, the, the tetragram. We don't say Yutke Vavke. So we say Adonai, or Lord in English. 
So we're taking the name of God. It's the same thing. It's same concept where we're learning a whole time. Yudke vavke is yichudi Allah. It's the ultimate concept of unity. We're there, everything is one. We're saying the word Adonai. Adonai means that there's a ruler and a subject. There's no king without a nation. That seemingly thinks that the nation has their own identity that nullifies himself to the king. But really the nullification of the, of the nation to the king is that they realize that, that the king is their existence. Not like a king, uh, a regular king of, of flesh and blood where we nullify, people nullify themselves to the king because they're afraid of the king. But we, as Jews, we nullify ourselves to the king because we realize that even that, that he's not just the king. His kingship, what it means the Abish this kingship, the Abish this kingship, which is Malchus, gives existence. His kingship is the existence of the world. It's not his kingship is his his rules and regulations, his power. No, his kingship is the existence of the world. Why? Because Malchus, from the Devar Hashem, from the word of God, which in Kabbalah is the concept of Malchus, his Melech gives us existence. So I'm not nullifying to God because I'm afraid of him as a, as a Melech boss of Adam, as a, a king of flesh and blood. I'm, I'm nullifying to my existence. I'm nullifying myself to my existence, to the existence that gives me existence, to true existence. Yes, God creates, sustains as it should be as now. Yes, all completely independent and separate unity. That's the beauty of Malchus. We should praise Malchus. When we say Melech, we're praising Malchus because Malchus gives us our identity. Malchus is our creator, so to say. Malchus, the attribute of Malchus, but it created, the Abish to create it through Malchus so that we should be who we are. Because if God would create us through Shem Havaya, we would be bottled. We wouldn't be who we are at this present time. So the Abish that comes in Malchus in the in the in the word Adnai or in the word Alakim, and he does a Timtum so that we, I, should be who I am at this present time, and I should be able to accept of myself the Kabbalah Samalchus. I should be able to accept of myself the yoke of Yahweh. Now, self understood, and Mitz Hashem one day. We'll say the name. Where was the Shema Vaya said? In the base of Mikdash. In the base of Mikdash, the name of God was said. Since the destruction of the temple, nobody has ever said the Shema Vaya. We're waiting for Mashiach to come. We'll get again build the base of Mikdash. So there will be the revelation of God in the world. And Shema Vaya, you'll, be, you'll hear the Shema Vaya. We'll reach up to Yehudi Allah. We'll reach up to the ultimate unity between the world and, 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 and God. But at this present time, we don't say it. We say Shem Adnus. We say the concept of the way Havaya Yudke Vavke comes into Adnus, into Lordship, to Malchus. So that's a symptom of, 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 of the Shem Havaya, but Chas it's not a symptom to God, because it's the name of God. But at the same moment, it's the way God wants to have that there should be a unit, there should be a, 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 a world, an existence. In Yehud, through Yehudi, at least through Yehudi Tata. At least, if it cannot be through the unity of Yehudi Allah, the higher level of unity, because the world cannot handle it. So at least it comes to Yehudi Tata, through the concept of Baruch Shein Kaved Machus Eilai Lombard. That's one of the reasons why we say this quietly. Right? We say Shema aloud. We say Baruch Shekvei Mochus Lombard. Because in essence, we want to show that this is, that this is even though it's right now the Avedah, but we need to reach up to Yechudi Allah. We need to reach up to the higher level of unity, which is the first verse. Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekein Hashem Echad. Ki Bistal Kos Midizu V'Shem Zechas Shalom Kos withdrawal of this attribute and this name from the world, God forbid. The world will revert to its to its source, the word of God, and the breath of his mouth. Should be totally nullified in its source. There would no be world world. It wouldn't be world. Oilam 
the word Olam itself. Inherent in the word Olam is the limitation. Olam. The word Olam comes from the word Helen. Hiddenness. Baruch Shein created Malchusay Le'olam. The Hebishter created the Midas of Malchus and all the attributes so that he'd be able to be a world. Vo'ed. But what is the true reason of this world? Vo'ed. It's really for Echad. Is that a Jew should reveal the Echad in the world. A Jew should reveal in this hiddenness that it's really not hidden. It's really there. So I should be able to reveal what its true hiddenness is. And the, the, the true hiddenness is void, is back to echad, is back to one. However, the same which you will find itself with the source with it has with it would be no being if it would at this present time reveal the echad in an open way, the world would 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 revert to nothingness. And that's ultimately the greatness of Mashiach. And the revelation of God that even though God will be revealed when Mashiach comes in a in a, in an open way, it, the world will continue to stay the way it is because that's the truth. The truth is the world could stay the way it is. In Mitzchem, when the world rectifies itself and the world elevates itself, but at this present time, if the the Abish would reveal himself, the world would revert to nothingness. Mashiach will come. The world will will stay with the way it is. And to be able to have the revelation of God in a revealed way. And that's why Mitch Hashem, one of the principles of Jewish religion, of Jewish faith is the is the resurrection of the dead. That Mitch Hashem, not only will the world be able to have its revelation of godliness, but even the human being. That Mitch Hashem Mashiach comes, the human being, the flesh, the eyes of a human, the physical eyes of a human being, be able to see godliness. And therefore, all the neshamas that had to die from this world because they couldn't have the spiritual revelation in their body because they had to leave their body. They had to go back up to the go up to or go up to a higher level to be able to receive godliness because they couldn't have it in this body. Which Mashiach comes, the thirteenth principle of Jewish faith is there'll be the resurrection of the dead that all the neshamas will come back into a body and merit. Not only to see godliness the way the neshama is out of a body, but to be able to see godliness the way the neshama is in their physical body. And that, as the Rambam writes, that's something, the niske, venichia, veniris, this concept of to be able to see spirituality in a physical way is one of the wonders of messianic times. It's one of the wonders of the world. And amid Shem, Be'ezrat Hashem, we will merit, hopefully very soon, to reach up to the next level of the coming of Mashiach, where Ultimate Mashiach will come and rebuild the base of Middash, keep its gullies, bring the Jews together for the purpose of this revelation. So let's hope we'll merit to that. This completes the Tanya of the day. Friends, today is 20th day of the month. Am I right? Today is the 20th day of the month. Yes. Today is the 20th day of the month, which is chapter 97, chapter 103. If you do those six, seven chapters, you do the chitas of the day. God bless you all. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful day. And may Shem continue tomorrow to learn the chitas of the day. Have a beautiful day. God bless you.